I'd always been interested in, in medical missions. So I first went out to Nepal for just a couple of months to see if I would fit in. Three years later, we got a call to go back for four years. We stayed for 12. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Nepal was a very backward country, I'm sure you realize, and the healthcare system is very shaky. Here I was able to do work that uh, might never get done. One day I had to do a, an operation on a woman who was in labor but bleeding to death. And we had no anesthetist. And in fact, we didn't have an operating room. We had a, a big table. And there was only one thing to do. We had to do a cesarean section with anesthesia through a mask and a local infiltration. And under fear and trembling and a lot of prayer beforehand, I'll tell you that. But happily, both the mother and baby survived. Another very rewarding thing was that uh, it was possible to teach some of the young Nepali doctors the basics of surgery. After being in Nepal for a few years, I found out there wasn't any good single textbook of surgery for doctors working in bush hospitals in Asia or Africa. And so I found out that there was a, a doctor living in Kenya who felt the same way. So he gathered about 10 or 12 of us. We got together and we wrote a, what we called a cookbook of surgery, primary surgery, two volumes. Just last week, I had a letter from a doctor in Uganda. And he said, primary surgery is getting lots of use. He says, I think that your work has probably saved a lot of lives.